Oh, hi there. My wife thought this would be funny. <laughs> it's Joel Hobnack again, small groups. Good to be with you again as we continue with the gospel. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that there are plenty of spots open on the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel schedule, so get yourself an hour. I will only shut up about this once every member of a small group has an hour. So, as long as you have receipts, I will let you alone. Anyway, we'll be continuing in Mark's Gospel. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The last week we saw the apostles being sent out on their mission, and this week we see them come back. And we see them excited to tell Jesus everything they taught, how it was received or not received. We wanted to tell them about the people they healed and the unclean spirits they cast out. And we see Jesus want to listen to them. He tells them, let's go and retreat. Come away with me to this deserted place. And they try, and it's very crowded, and so they go all the way to the other side of the lake, and it's crowded there too, because apparently the apostles' mission bore fruit. Because when they preached the gospel, people wanted to hear more about this coming of the kingdom of God and the person who's preaching it. They wanted to hear about Jesus, and they wanted to hear the gospel from Jesus. And so they followed the apostles. And, yeah, so Jesus wanted to be with the apostles. They wanted to be with him. This is a good desire, a holy desire. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't want it. But Jesus shows us by example, when he sees the people and his heart is moved for them, we can see by his example that sometimes even a holy desire is superseded by the need to be obedient to the will of the Father. Anyone who's parented young children can relate to this. The sleepless nights, you know, the knowledge that you're going to be dragging the next day, but you wouldn't do it differently, even if you didn't have fun. It was the good thing to do, the right thing to do, the thing you would do again in a heartbeat. And that's Jesus' heart for these people. Because if he didn't lead them, if he didn't shepherd them, they would wander who knows where. St. Teresa of Avila, in her book, The Foundations, tells a story of a religious brother she knew who told her the story that he had made a decision in his heart to be obedient to his superior no matter the cost. And one day, this brother was beaten down by the day's labors. It was eating time. He had been working all day hard, and he could barely move his legs. And he sees a bench, he sits down on the bench to rest. Right about that time, his superior comes around the corner and sees him sitting idle on the bench and says to him, Get up, get that shovel, go to the garden and dig. This brother says nothing. He's so tired, he can't do anything. But he gets up, he picks up the shovel, and he heads to the garden. And along the way, he's given a vision of Jesus. Jesus appears to him. Jesus is carrying the cross. Jesus looks at him. And he's so faint and weary that the brother understands immediately that no matter what he suffers, no matter what the brother suffers, it's nothing compared to what Jesus suffered for us. In Psalm 139, David prays, Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. And we could add that likewise the Lord is with us in the desert because he invited us there. And he's with us among the crowds of people because he led us there. We can trust that he's wherever we are as long as we turn to him. So, 
whatever your struggles, whatever your sufferings, even in doing ministry when you're tired, pray for perseverance. Pray to Mary and the apostles who are with him on his mission on earth. Pray for one another. Pray for me. Know that I'll be with you.